Ranking Member Cummings and members of the Committee, good morning. Management and operation of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is an important subject. My perspective is grounded in my experience and observations as a member of the Commission since being sworn in on April 23, 2010, and my former role as a 15-year member and chairman for two years of the Advisory Committee on Reactor Safeguards, a statutory committee of technical experts. Management and operation of the Commission are carried out within an overall structure of law and policy. The Commission's independent and multi-member character, with staggered terms for its members, is designed to insulate regulatory decisions from political consideration and to provide stability for regulatory policy. Nuclear safety matters are technically complex. This Commission structure allows for a diversity of insights to be brought to bear in the Commission's decision-making. Under Reorganization Plan No. 1 of 1980, the Commission as a whole formulates policy and regulations, issues orders, and conducts adjudication. Policy formulation includes major administrative decisions with policy implications. The Commission has ultimate authority to determine by majority vote in an area of doubt whether any matter, action, question, or area of inquiry pertains to one of these functions. The Senate Committee on Governmental Affairs, in reporting on the reorganization plan, declared that, quote, the Committee also intends the Commission to exercise the authority to interpret the plan, end quote. The legislative history of the plan and the presidential messages to Congress in submitting the plan emphasize that the Chairman is subject to the policies of the Commission and the oversight authority of the Commission. As Principal Executive Officer of the Commission, the Chairman has the ultimate responsibility to the Commission and the public for the proper day-to-day -day management and administration of the agency. However, the Chairman is statutorily responsible to the Commission for assuring that the Executive Director of Operations and the staff are responsive to the requirements of the Commission in the performance of its functions. The 1980 Reorganization Plan also provides that the heads of the offices of the General Counsel, the Secretary of the Commission, and the Advisory Committee on Reactor Safeguards shall continue to report directly to the Commission. The Chairman and the Executive Director, through the Chairman, are responsible for ensuring that the Commission is fully and currently informed about matters within the Commission's functions. The reporting relationship of the Executive Director to the Chairman is not intended to interfere with the ability of the EDO to make independent recommendations on matters that the Commission has delegated to him. While the Chairman has special responsibility for policy planning and development for the Commission, the Commission could not function in any satisfactory way if the Executive Director or other senior managers were required to misrepresent or suppress their views or analyses. The Commission is well served by its dedicated staff with many senior managers who bring long experience and advanced technical expertise. Their technical evaluations are essential to informed Commission decision making. The transmission of adequate information and unbiased perspectives to the Commission for its decision making and oversight is essential to the agency's mission of protecting public health and safety. I joined my fellow Commissioners to formally express our serious concerns regarding the Chairman's leadership. I regret that partisan or other ill motives have been ascribed to the action that we have taken. This could not be further from the truth. Thank you very much.